For the last year or so in my iPhone 15 Pro Max reviews and my Galaxy S24 Ultra reviews, I said that I wanted to try the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. In today's video, I'll share that experience with you and why I think Sony is missing a bit of a trick with this phone. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. Quick disclaimer, Sony did not send me this phone, I wish, but I didn't buy it myself either. This phone was sent to me by one of my friends, Lee, who also happens to be a fan of this channel. So we can all thank Lee for that. I love the community that we're building here. That was super kind of him. I had the Sony Xperia for just over a month and my first impressions when it comes to the design of the phone was how light and friendly to use this phone is. At launch, I do think that the price of £12.99 here in the UK needs to be a little bit more competitive, but more on that later. I wasn't too sure how I'd feel about the back of the phone not being Victus 2 glass, but after a month, I was never really concerned about scratching it or damaging it. I think because it's not glossy or you know completely flat, this pattern at the back really helps with that. At the front, the display is indeed Victus 2 and certainly feels quite premium from a display perspective. I never had the Xperia before. I had old Sony Ericsson phones before, but they don't count really. So it's quite a contrast from these flagships from Apple, Google and Samsung that I do have and have tested. Sony really improved this phone from last year's model and from what I could tell, it's definitely been a decent upgrade, especially from the camera sensor perspective. The Sony Xperia is much more ergonomic to use than the flagship devices that I've tried so far. Extremely light, and I think there's a lot to be said about this narrower form factor. Not to compare this with the Galaxy Fold, for example, but it's the same width that I personally really like. If you get the Sony case for it, it also adds this gentle bump at the back, which again, makes it even better to hold, has a nice feel to it, very grippy, despite it being quite thin. One of the things that you're gonna notice straight away that I certainly noticed was how accurate, sometimes, you know, you could say, maybe too accurate the fingerprint scanner is. But again, like my Fold, I do enjoy having that here on the side. I think that's super convenient. We don't get face recognition though, which is a bit of a bummer, but potentially more secure because of that. Another thing that really surprised me about this phone, it's quite a minor thing really, but I really enjoyed it, is the haptics. Probably the most pronounced haptic feedback I've ever tried. And the Xperia has some extra features as well that allow you to use those haptics when listening to music or watching videos, which is quite different, perhaps not everyone's cup of tea, but I thought it was a nice thing to have in there as well. And how not to love this physical shutter button as well. For people who take videos and photos, this really makes that experience a lot better. In fact, the entire experience resembles a Sony camera. As a Sony shooter myself, this phone is really easy to use from a menu perspective. Everything looks like my main camera over here, and I really appreciate that. And of course, we will talk about the cameras in a moment, but looking beyond the design, this phone comes with features that I did not expect to have. You do need to look past the Sony bloatware that comes with it. You know, there's not that many Sony apps in there, but they do add a few things that I think that are quite annoying and unnecessary, but it's easy enough to just remove them or simply not use them. On the positive side, there's quite a few great features that we don't really see anymore on any smartphone. You know, for instance, you can extend the storage with a micro SD card, that is so good. I mean, we know why other brands don't do this. Perhaps they want you to spend more money on their storage upgrades and cloud services, right? But as a consumer, we have to applaud Sony for this. And I really hope we see others do the same in future because this does add a level of freedom that I really appreciate it. So many phones nowadays don't include a headphone jack either, right? And it has been so nice to have this again. But Sony went a little bit further with their audio implementation here. The Xperia 1 Mark V actually has a built-in DAC. From a specs perspective, we're not really talking about the same level of an expensive standalone DAC, but listening to music on something like Tidal has been fantastic on this phone. And talking about music, a quick word from today's sponsors, Filmora, who have just launched an exciting update of Filmora 13 with a new AI music generator. Some of the features on Filmora 13 are not even available on the S24 Ultra, which has AI built in. Even my expensive Adobe Premiere package and Final Cut Pro don't have many AI features which Filmora offer at a much better price. One of the biggest worries of mine when creating content like this is finding royalty-free songs that I can use here on YouTube. Right. It costs me hundreds of dollars every year, if not more, in purchasing licenses for music and services that I can use to add music to my videos. I love that part of the edit as well and something that I really appreciate when I'm watching videos is to have a nice a bit of background music sometimes, or even a break with music. With Filmora 13, you could avoid all of that by using their music generator. And as you can see here, or here, here, it's super easy and intuitive to do. Not only could you be saving money by using this service, but it also means you would have no issues in monetizing your content. So you can just focus on creating the best content for your audience. Here's a quick sample of the result of literally a short few minutes of work.
amazing, right? And thanks so much Filmora for sponsoring this video. Before we move on and talk about the cameras, there is one small issue that I noticed, which is around the auto brightness on the phone. It's really strange. I don't really know if it's because of the sensors that they use or maybe just Android being Android, but it felt a little bit random. And so I ended up just turning it off. It would sometimes go really dim, even in bright sunlight. And sometimes at night when you want it to be dim, it would be really bright on your face. But what I really enjoyed about the display as a content creator was the fact that I could use it as a monitor for my camera. Sure, I found this really cool, but I appreciate that not everyone is a content creator, right? So only content creators really and photographers perhaps will appreciate this feature. But the display is really nice to watch content on. It's a 6.5 inch 4K resolution OLED display. The aspect ratio is actually the nicest thing here at 21 by nine and it has HDR10. Sony's creator mode is awesome as well for certain content and really makes a difference if you watch a lot of high quality content on your phone. The Xperia 1 Mark V packs a 52 megapixel main camera with Sony's Exmor T sensor, which captures a 12 megapixel image. Sure, there are higher resolution cameras out there, but the quality of the images that you get here is really impressive. The Photo Pro app is my favorite to use. With the basic mode, you can of course just use it as a pretty much a, a point and shoot camera, but I had a lot of fun using the program mode because I like messing around with all the different settings depending on the situation. I was really looking forward to the quality of images and I gotta say, it didn't disappoint, especially when recording 4K videos. And the more I use this phone, the more I realize that this phone is for a particular segment in the market, right? This is not really, something that will compete with an iPhone or with the S24 Ultra, at least in my opinion, this is for someone who actually enjoys taking photos and, and videos, um, you know, using a professional camera and having this as, a, as an additional tool to their, to their toolkit. And because one of the biggest upgrades was the actual Exmo sensor, I wanted to see how it performs in low light. Get up on it and do, get up on it and do, my channel's thriving light, don't see the And again, I wasn't disappointed there either. When you zoom in, in low light, things do fall apart a little bit. But on the main sensor, I really loved how good the photos looked and the videos as well, how they came out. I really, really enjoyed taking pictures in RAW and you know editing them in Lightroom. That was one of my favorite things to do on any smartphone. And on the Xperia, it was extra special. I'm not even a professional when it comes to photography, but I was really pleased with the results here. I think in low light, it does add quite a bit of noise. You know, it's a bit of grain in here when comparing to other phones, but that's probably because it expects you to know what you're doing, which is not my case. Taking portraits though has been really fun and I really love the quality of the portrait shots. Like over here in this cafe with artificial lighting or indoors with very low lighting. We're taking regular photos. I love the character that you get with these pictures. Sure, there's a bit of noise in there, a bit of grain that you can get if you don't know what you're doing like me, but I actually like this imperfection in some photos, right? It, it made them more real and less digitally processed. You know, it's kind of relying a lot on the photographer behind the camera rather than on software. And I, I really appreciated that. Not to say that the software on it doesn't correct a few things if you in basic mode, but I found the colors to be very natural looking. And like I keep saying, I was really impressed by 4K quality in video. I think it's sometimes better than the iPhone. Let me show you what I mean. The more I use this phone, the more I realize that for video, this is incredible. This is kind of a an Instagram type, you know, format here or TikTok if you like the sort of stuff. You've got lots of natural light coming in here. But I just love how smooth it is. It's using um, eye tracking as well. You can choose between face tracking or eye tracking, and you can actually track animals as well. So you can have dogs and cats and things like that. I'm convinced it's better than the iPhone. I mean, it's definitely better than the S24 Ultra for video right now. The S24 Ultra right now in March 2024 does have some issues with some of the lenses and some of the configurations. But yeah, no, I'm super impressed with this. I mean, I, I'm now tempted to get one of these for myself because I am really, really impressed. I love for the sensor to have more megapixels, but I can see the decision making here. Perhaps it's a timing thing as well, but I can see why you know, they didn't go for that because ultimately the person using this phone already has a camera as their main thing, right? So I'm really enjoying how flexible it is. When you zoom into things, it doesn't really have that jolt that you get in some phones. And I know it's only 10, 12 megapixels, but still, you know, really decent quality. For, from a vlogging perspective, um, yeah, let me know what you think. And talking about flexibility, you can record 120 FPS on all sensors, which is really handy. I prefer to just use the main sensor, but if you like, you know, ultra wide or zoomed in to 85 millimeters, you can do slow motion in those sensors as well.
there's this one photo in London that I've been taking for, I don't know, at least 15 years. Let me show you. As I am absolutely sure you heard this earlier, when I was recording outside, the microphone is quite sensitive to wind noise, so you've got to be careful and plan ahead for that. It's not like the Google Pixel 8 Pro, which you know, you're able to reduce all of that noise. But to be honest, because of the target audience for this phone, which I believe to be people who really use the videos and photos in a professional way, I think Sony fully expects you to be using a microphone or recording externally anyway. But if you're not, just bear that in mind because yeah, it does pick up quite a bit of wind noise. Okay, great, awesome camera, but how is the phone for doing some regular things like messaging and productivity stuff? Personally, I think because of this aspect ratio, the Xperia makes multitasking actually quite pleasing to do. From a productivity perspective I wouldn't suggest this to be as good as the Galaxy series but I certainly welcomed being able to continue to watch a video for example whilst whatsapping someone at the same time don't say it what don't say it the iPhone can't do that there I said it and whilst we don't have all the AI bells and whistles that you know we're starting to see in pretty much every phone these days it's not something I'd say I missed on this phone I think when editing photos perhaps you know it would be nice to have a few features in there but that's something quite new and will probably come later I'd be very surprised if AI wasn't more prominent in the Mark 6. The Xperia 1 Mark V does use AI for the autofocus on the camera, for example, and you can even recognize animals when taking photos. It's not the fully fledged experience that you get on Google Pixel or with Galaxy AI, for example. I do wonder how the Xperia 1 Mark VI will tackle that AI aspect, basically to stay relevant, but at the same time, I didn't really miss it, so it's probably not that important for a lot of people. If, like me, you've been thinking about the Xperia, but you've been quite hesitant, perhaps the price, perhaps, you know, other things, let me know why you haven't yet decided to get one. And if you do have the Xperia, it doesn't have to be this one or any previous versions, comment down below what your favorite thing about this phone is. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I think I am sold on it, but I wonder what you think as well. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It makes a massive difference. YouTube is really funny when I deviate a little bit from my core content so don't let this video die give it a thumbs up or any feedback would be great and if you're new here welcome maybe your sub is what will take us to 100,000 subscribers i can't even believe i'm saying this we're so close we're closer than ever really which is insane right from a battery perspective i found the xperia to be quite good really if you let the system manage itself i found that turning things off like the auto brightness that i was doing could impact the battery but if you're only doing five six perhaps even seven hours of screen on time you'll be absolutely fine for kind of a whole day usage for busier days i'd say if you're recording like lots of 4k videos you might want to consider having a power bank with you or being able to charge it during the day because yeah 4k videos and lots of usage on the screen will definitely consume more battery but for me during most days i was able to get to bedtime say 11 o'clock or midnight without having to recharge it overall from a performance perspective the snapdragon age gen 2 did really well for me even when i was really busy i did notice a couple of hiccups i have to be honest usually right after unlocking the phone but nothing that i hadn't seen before in other flagships but it was definitely prominent in there perhaps i'm more acutely aware to those things because i'm testing the iphone and testing the galaxy s24 ultra so any hiccup was probably exacerbated. I didn't experience any overheating though, even while recording 4K videos or even gaming for a bit or charging the phone. All of those things were true with the iPhone when the first came out, so that's a positive. Now, I know I mentioned gaming, but I didn't really do a lot of gaming to be honest with you, but it does come with a gaming enhancer mode, which is awesome if you like to use it for gaming. I think it's one of those underrated features that I actually think should be on all the competitor phones more so than on the Xperia. The Xperia is something that I see as a, like I said, for maybe a photographer backup phone or someone like a content creator, not really for someone who plays a lot of games on their phone. Which brings me to my original comment about Sony missing a trick with this phone. I'm almost certain that this phone would appeal to a lot more people if the price was slightly lower and they made a couple of tweaks from a hardware perspective, like having an LTPO display or a more premium finish at the back. Other than that, for the people that I believe is their target audience. This phone is fantastic and as a creator myself, they definitely got me and I definitely have my eyes now on that Xperia 1 Mark 6. I have a whole bunch of smartphone reviews and comparisons on this playlist over here and YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. I hope to see you there.